California is ill-prepared for the big one. This is what geologists and experts have found. Fizz.org, Jocelyn Zaplet reports, beyond the beautiful weather, Hollywood, swimming, the beach, if there's one certainty in California, it's that a massive earthquake will strike at some point. The mega quakes are predicted to strike. Some say within the next 30 years, this is what they've been saying 15 years ago. But when the big one hits, a recent report says the Western state is ill-prepared and local officials as well as major businesses need to face that reality. They have to prevent the inevitable disaster from becoming a catastrophe. Drafted by a group of business and policy leaders, the report identifies key areas that need to be addressed before a quake as strong as magnitude 8 happens, notably aging infrastructure, the water supplies, the gas pipes, the risk of catastrophic fires. One of the biggest vulnerabilities, according to the reports, relates to the Cajon Pass, a narrow mountain pass where the San Andreas Fault intersects with key lifelines, including, including the freeways, railways, gas and petroleum pipelines, as well as the electric lines. The major earthquake on San Andreas Fault, one of California's most dangerous faults, would cut most lifelines in and out of Southern California, and this would prevent critical aid from reaching some 20 million people hampering recovery efforts. This is according to what the experts predict. The quake would also rupture flammable pipelines, triggering explosions and fires that could burn out of control. Quote, anything that comes into Southern California has to cross the San Andreas Fault to get to us. Gas, electricity, water, freeways, railways. This is what Dr. Lucy Jones, the seismologist, has uh, recently said she acts as advisor for the Southern California Disaster Risk Reduction Initiative Committee. Dr. Lucy Jones is one of the experts who has uh, informed us concerning the recent Southern California Ridgecrest earthquakes and reminding us that the Ridgecrest earthquakes have not mitigated, they have not lessened the likelihood of the Southern San Andreas fault rupturing. She says that is a whole different issue from the Ridgecrest earthquakes and that the San Andreas is still awaiting the big one. She says most of the water that we get has, has to cross the fault to reach us, but when the earthquake happens, all of the aqueducts will be broken at the same time. This is what Dr. Lucy Jones says. She's known as California's earthquake lady. She said one way to get around this, what we depend on, was to look at alternative water sources, including from contaminated aquifers beneath the Los Angeles area that could be cleaned up, even though it would cost a tremendous amount. She said the best defense against a broken aqueduct is, not, uh, is to not need an aqueduct. So installing automatic shutoff valves on natural gas and petroleum gas pipelines that run near the San Andreas Fault could also help prevent major fires. As for maintaining communication with the outside world once the big one does take place to disrupt the energy grids, for example, Jones said solar power could be one answer. So also addressing the report that the vulnerability of many homes and buildings in Southern California where local communities have yet to follow the example of the city of Los Angeles in requiring that structures that risk collapsing have to be retrofitted. Also, the experts say building codes need to be reviewed to make sure that not only will structures not kill people, but will remain standing and usable after a major quake. Dr. Jones said, today we are building in a huge financial vulnerability. We are not going to kill people with these buildings, but we are not going to be able to use them afterwards, and that's a big deal. For 1 to 2% more of the cost, 
we could most likely make buildings still usable after a major earthquake. Now, computer simulations by U.S. Geolo Geological Survey suggest that a magnitude 7.8 earthquake on the southern end of the San Andreas Fault would cause shaking for some two whole minutes, which means that uh, about 2,000 people would lose their lives, including 53 injuries, causing $213 billion in damages. Well, two or three minutes of shaking, that's a long time. Uh, the largest recorded earthquake in California was in 1857 at Fort Tijon Quake that ruptured the San Andreas Fault for 225 miles. Scientists say pressure and seismic energy has since furiously been building along the fault, which constitutes the boundary between the two moving tectonic plates of the Pacific Plate, uh, driving nor uh, down under the North American Plate. It's a subduction zone, as we know. Robert Graves, seismologist with USGS, says it's inevitable that we will have a big earthquake because that pressure needs to be released. He said that given the certainty that disaster will strike California, needs to address head-on vulnerabilities to minimize the impact. He says we need to get people to recognize that an event like this is a community event and we are at the beginning of that process. This is more than, say, me as an individual making sure my building is going to be safe. If all the other buildings in my neighborhood are not down and the water delivery system and power are not working, it would not matter that my building is safe. So we are in this together. In the meantime, San Andreas Fault is locked, loaded, and ready to roll. This is what the uh, experts are saying. Southern California, San Andreas, locked, loaded, ready to roll. Leading earthquake scientists said Wednesday, well, said recently at a national earthquake conference in Long Beach. San Andreas Fault is one of California's most dangerous and is the state's longest fault. And for Southern California, the last big earthquake to strike that area was in 1857 with a magnitude 7.9 earthquake ruptured an astonishing 185 miles between Monterey County and San Gabriel Mountains near Los Angeles. It's been quiet since then, too quiet. This is what Thomas Jordan, director of Southern California Earthquake Center, tells us. We've had an earthquake drought and we're overdue for another big one. He says the springs on the San Andreas, San Andreas system have been wound very, very tight, and the southern San Andreas Fault in particular looks like it's locked, loaded, and ready to go. Other sections of San Andreas Fault also are overdue for the big one. Further southeast in the Cajon Passage is the San Bernardino County. The fault has not moved substantially since an earthquake in 1812, and further southeast towards the Salton Sea, it has been relatively quiet since about 1680 to 1690. That's salt and sea, that's definitely different than the Ridgecrest area. Now here's the problem. Scientists have observed that based on the movement of tectonic plates, with the Pacific plate moving northwest and of the North American plate, earthquakes should be re relieved about 16 feet of accumulating plate movement every 100 years. However, San Andreas has not relieved stress that has been building up for more than 100 years. 16 feet. Jordan said it's important that California focus on becoming resilient to the potential huge earthquake that's coming, one as strong as magnitude 8. Now he praised Los Angeles' plan to require earthquake retrofits on apartment and concrete buildings pushed into law by Mayor Eric Garcetti. Jordan said, it's remarkable that this is happening. He said, we know politically how difficult it is to make these kinds of changes. Other areas focus on including strengthening Los Angeles' vulnerable aqueduct systems and its telecommunication networks. A 2008 U.S. Geological Survey report warned that a magnitude 7.8 earthquake on the southern South San Andreas Fault would cause more than 
as we said, almost 2,000 deaths, $200 billion in damages and severe long-lasting disruptions. Among the predicted problems would be the sewer system could be out of commission for six months. Such an earthquake could cause shaking for nearly two minutes, with a stronger shaking in the Coachella Valley, Inland Empire, and Antelope Valley, also could send pockets of strong shaking into areas where sediments trap shaking waves, such as the San Gabriel Valley and East Los Angeles. Now, we also just recently had the foretaste of uh, a very small, minor amount of shaking, 7.1 magnitude on July 5th in the Ridgecrest area in Southern California, the coastal volcanic field. This is just a... Uh, I don't know, dry run? I, I, what would you call it? Uh, Ridgecrest, of course, thank goodness, nobody, we had no loss of life, thank goodness. Um, very, very sparsely populated. And I guess they were also, because of the fact that it was in the evening, around 8 o'clock, 8 to 20 in the evening, and they had an earthquake the day before, they were ready. Because they were warned that there could be uh, an after, a, a bigger quake and aftershocks. So they were ready to uh, spr spring out of the house and we didn't have, thank goodness, uh, they were they were prepared. Now what happens if such a thing hits Los Angeles? Well most buildings there are not able to stand a 7 magnitude earthquake. Most have been retrofitted, they can stand a 6 magnitude earthquake but not a 7. So you can understand what that would mean. This is a, a modern building, a new building, an anti-seismic, uh, anti-earthquake building. And uh, the Taiwan earthquake was about 6.5 magnitudes. So you can understand the devastation of an earthquake less than 7 magnitude. This is what it could come to. So you can understand what this would mean. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.